Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. We broadcast live on Mondays from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, achieving greater success and sustaining that greater success, and finding greatness. My special guest today is Trevor Ozawa. He is a very successful attorney, and he has been achieving amazing things as our Honolulu City Councilman. Trevor is a man of great character, high standards, and he gets things done. And today, we are going beyond City Council. Hey, Trevor. Hey, Rusty. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being on Beyond the Lines today. Thank you. I want to know, uh, well, I know that you grew up in Hawaii Kai, and you live in Hawaii Kai still, but I want to know your background when you were in your youth. Can you share about what schools you went to? Yeah. Um, born and raised out in Hawaii Kai. Yeah. I went to, uh, I actually went to early school out in, uh, by the university on-ramp, that playground down there that oh, everybody yeah. sees. Then I went to Kamilawiki Elementary School, uh, kindergarten and sixth grade. And... Um, all three of my other siblings went there as well. Then uh, seventh grade, I went to Kamehameha, and I went to Kamehameha for, from intermediate to high school, and I was very involved in um, student government from Kamiloiki, and uh, also, at, also at Kamehameha, I was not in student government at Kamehameha, but I was involved in the math team, the physics team, oh. the golf team. All the real cool things, you know, so, <laughs> and chess, chess club, you can't forget chess club, so uh, that, and um, at Kamiloiki, I was the president of the school and um, involved in, in student council and junior police officer and played sports my whole, my whole, you know, childhood. Great. From baseball, basketball, football, uh, but I ended up really taking a liking to golf and soc soccer as well, too. Yeah, so. and then what college did you end up going to? Uh, I went to the University of Southern California in Los Angeles. And what did you study over there? Uh, I majored in economics. I got my Bachelor of Arts in economics. Uh, for a short moment, I was a double major uh, in Chinese uh, and uh, economics, but I ended up dropping the Chinese part because it would have required me to stay one extra year at USC, and uh, we couldn't afford that. So I, instead, I, I lived abroad, actually. I lived abroad my... Um, last semester at in London, England, and then I moved to, uh, after I graduated, I uh, directly enrolled into school out in Beijing, wow. which was much cheaper and a more affordable route to do, and, and just embraced myself in learning the language every day and, um, and in the culture, um, and it was a great experience. Yeah, it sounds like yeah. it, and, and then you ended up going into law school. Which law school did, did. you attempt? So I went to uh, Suffolk University Law School out in Boston, Massachusetts. It's right at um, at the Park Street Station, right by the State House there. Um, it's in the movie The Departed. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's where our library, <laughs> they used our library to, to shoot some scenes there. Um, but, yeah, so it's right there. And, you know, I know some <laughs> people are sad about the, the, the Dodgers losing, but it's hard because I was both the Dodgers and Red Sox fan going to USC and that's Suffolk, right. That's right. I'm happy that the Red Sox won as yeah. well. So why why did law become a, an interest for you? You know, um, for a couple of reasons, or oh, several reasons. Um, one, one uh, at USC, I actually interned with a, a sports agent, Lee Steinberg, oh, who wow. um, Jerry Maguire was based after. Yeah. And I realized that a lot of the sports agents were actually attorneys, and so um, they encouraged me to, you know, look at law and. If I wanted to go into that uh, career field, which I wanted to, um, law could be a great asset for that. The other is, um, you know, my father passed away in 2002 while I was in at USC, and I was 19 years old, and um, I was his next of kin, and uh, I had to deal with a lot of legal issues right right off the bat. And looking at some of this stuff, I went to our law school at um, USC and tried to figure out what, you know, what some of this meant. And it was like reading a foreign language. I, I had I felt powerless, and and you know I didn't know what anything meant. So, 
thinking about that, I was like, well, if I, you know, if I can understand the law, maybe situations like this may occur in, in the future and I'd know what to do. And the third thing is, I felt like the legal profession was kind of, it was just kind of a, an interest of mine that, you know, being in the courtroom, being a litigator, helping others, kind of in my nature. And uh, I felt like it could provide me with a lot of options uh, into the future. Yeah, no, that's interesting yeah. insights. And I want to know, Trevor, what was your first official job? Um, besides picking up the, the leaves all around our house yeah. and stuff, um, <laughs> crushing the cans, um, it was at Wildlife Country Club. I uh, cleaned the toilets, took down the flag, folded it up, vacuumed the pro shop, uh, threw out the trash, and um, and I also worked at Craig's Bakery in Kailua uh, on the weekends. So right when I turned 15, I had both of those jobs, and uh, I, I enjoyed both of them for different reasons. I love donuts, and also at <laughs> at the uh, at Wiley, I mean, I love to golf. Yeah, and so. Um, it gave me an opportunity to be able to play the game of golf and learn how to get better at it. Um, an opportunity that I wouldn't have had otherwise, you know, other than working there and being able to get the employee benefits of immersing myself there. And I want to thank them too, because they they really promoted junior golf and, and allowing me to practice. Yeah, I had no idea about that, but that's such a great thing that they did. That's a win-win situation. Yeah. And Trevor, you have an absolutely beautiful family. Can you tell me about your wife and your two kids? Yeah. Um, so my wife uh, is Nietzsche okay. Ozawa, and um, you know Nietzsche, like the philosopher. Yeah. Um, I thought it was N I C H I when I first met her, and she introduced herself to me. But I ended up um, learning that it's a, it was a very difficult name at the time to spell it, German name, um, named after the German philosopher. She's from Guam. Yeah. She's also an attorney. We met, like I said, in law school. At, I did my last year of law school at the University of Hawaii, uh, William S. Richardson School of Law. And we met in a, uh, a clinic, a uh, defense clinic, so litigation defense clinic. And um, yeah, we had a common bond. We had both studied abroad in, in China. That's how we kind of first started you know, talking story. Um, we have two beautiful daughters and um, London yeah. and Ava. London is four years old and Ava is one. She just turned one in July. And um, London was born three days before the primary election in 2014. Oh. And we named her London because right after we got married, we went off to London and uh, that was my wife's first time to, to Europe. And um, we had a great time. And uh, like I said, I studied abroad in London as well. and we. We just really felt like it meant so much for us starting out our married life together. And so her name is actually London Leahy, and Leahy is where we got married at uh, Leahy Beach Park out oh, there. Oh, I like hearing that. Diamond Head. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, Trevor, why, when and why did you get interested in public service? Um, really, I would say from when I was in elementary school, I felt like public service was a calling for me, uh, being a junior police officer, being on the student council. Uh, at Kamilawiki, I felt like I wanted to help my peers to make their lives a little bit better every day. And, and it kind of stuck with me. At USC, I was involved in student uh, student government on the USC Student Senate, and even in law school. But eventually, I worked at the city council after I graduated from law school. And I, I worked there as a staff member and realized that, you know what, if if I ever had the opportunity to be a city council member myself, I would probably take that opportunity and, and try to because I wanted to be the voice for the community, to have a seat at the table, to take care of the little things that mean a lot to people. Like, well, why is this left turn not happening? Or why, why is the trash not being picked up on time? Or why, why is it so expensive here? Why, why does traffic stall us for hours on end? And um, I'm persistent and uh, I have a passion for helping out in the community. Um, all three of my siblings moved away off this island, and a lot of my best friends moved away. And I think that if we can make this place a little bit better, then we can hopefully appeal to them to come back and we can you know, really enjoy what Hawaii is all about, which is family and friends. And you're definitely doing that. I mean, you're getting things done really good. And as a Honolulu City Council member, what do you like about being a council member? Well, I just love the opportunity to represent the district where I was born and raised and, and to see 
to see it through with passion, you know, to stick my neck out on the line for, for things that I feel like our district really wants. You know, um, being able to, to help people on a daily basis when they email or call me or see me in, in grocery stores um, and ask me, hey, Trevor, can you look into this? Can you, can you try to do this? Can you? And, and we do things and we get them done, like helping people get their licenses faster. I mean, little things like that that really are, it's so, it's so irritating for a yeah. lot of people that, you know, if I'm there to help them, it means a lot. Like, I just ran into my friends, um, my, one of my friends at, at, at the bank recently, and she said, hey, you helped my mom um, and my grandma get, get their licenses, and they had no other, no other way to, to go about getting it. They tried everything, and they felt ho uh, helpless and hopeless. And um, you personally helped them get it very quickly, and, you, you know, they felt good about it. It's little things like that. But it's also some of the big things, like you know, making sure that we use your property tax dollars uh, for core services to to keep our neighborhoods uh, safe, uh, fun, and and uh, provide outdoor activities for the kids, like making sure our parks are are clean, safe. We got equipment. Um, some of our parks, when when I became a city council member, had no playground equipment, and I fought for that. We got playground equipment in there. Um, fought for better lighting, more parking. Um, more affordable options so in housing. You definitely, I mean, you're getting, you're doing a lot and people need to know all the things that you actually have done so far. And I wanna know, Trevor, you have a ton of supporters. Why do you think you're so likable <coughs> and why do you have so many of these great supporters? Yeah, I, I think it's that they know that I care for them and um, these supporters have, have been there uh, through thick and thin. Um, when we started this campaign out four years ago, we started out with three people, you know, my, my wife and, and my other friend. We started the campaign and we've grown to now re really thousands of people um, because I think we, they know that we're, we're really there for the right reasons and we're actually fighting for them every single day. Yeah, um, I'm accessible. They know my family. They know where I'm from. Uh, you know, there's really nothing that, that they can't ask of me that I'm not willing to go out and, and fight for them at, at City Hall. Um, and you have empathy for them. I do. And I feel for them because I, I look around and as I've, as I've been campaigning now for my second term, uh, you, you hear so many stories and the common theme is that people, people, are, people are wondering, is, is Hawaii changing? For the better, or is it changing for the worse? And some people that are moving away still, they, they feel like nobody's listening. They feel like they can't afford to be here. But, but when, they, when I tell them, look, I still think that Honolulu's best days are still ahead of us, yep. and I'm fighting to make sure that that happens, it rejuvenates them. And, um, and it's the least that I can do. You know, I'm, I'm just one man trying to make a difference for the community. And you are, you, yeah. t you totally are. And how, how do you like campaigning, Trevor? Campaigning is a tough job, you know? <laughs> it's, uh, I've been knocking on doors yeah. for really, four years ago I started going door to door. We've hit, we hit over 20, I think it was like 23,000 doors in the first election. And we're approaching the same in this one, which is almost complete, but I know every single nook and cranny in this, neighbor, in this district. The district goes from Ala Moana to Hawaii Kai. I never thought I would be able to say that, or never thought I would actually do that, but I did. And it's, it's good to get your feet on the ground and listen to people and um, experience stories. It's, it's tough too, because four years ago, I went to these people that lived in Wailaiki, and I knocked on their door, and they were a couple in their late 60s. They said that they had just retired, and they said that they're considering moving to the mainland, but I didn't believe them. They said that it was gonna, they're gonna move to a, a retirement community with near a, near a winery in Portland and have a good time in, in their retirement. And I said, why, why can't you just do that here? They're like, it's just too expensive. Four years later, I go back to that house again this year and uh, it's a new family in there. Wow. And so, you know, this is the reality. It's tough to see sometimes, but it's good to see too, you know, the society is changing and. I feel connected and part of the change. And what kind of endorsements do you have right now? You know, I got endorsements from a lot of the, 
a lot of the neighbors in my community, but big big organizations that yeah. I would say, uh, Honolulu, um, let's see, Shopal, yeah. the police union, uh, fire department, Hawaii Firefighters wow, Association, uh, the Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Association, uh, let's see, the General Contractors Association, and the Building Trades Council. That's a lot. Um, and, and you yeah. got, and Trevor, you got honored. You received the Hawaii Tourism and Lodging Award for leadership. I did, and I was, I wasn't expecting that. Um, you know, this is a lot of, this is all the private uh, hotel lodging and tourism organizations around the state. And, and it meant a lot to me, and I was very humbled because I just go to work, and luckily I have Waikiki in my district, so that probably helps because I'm always there for them. Um, I'm there for the community and the Hotel Lodging and Tourism Association because I know how, how important that industry is to the entire state. So I, I, I feel the added burden to do a good job. Uh, my dad worked in the hotel industry his entire life, and uh, it means a lot to my family and also to many others. And I, I know how important that is to, to keep food on the table for people. So uh, I'm there and I'm humbled by, by the support. It, it was kind of a affirmation that, that what I'm doing is resonating with, with the community. And I, I was really grateful. No, and ev everyone's recognizing that. So that's, that's awesome, Trevor. Trevor, we're gonna take a quick break. And then when we come back, I wanna talk to you about leadership and success. Okay, thanks. You're watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Honolulu City Councilman Trevor Ozawa. We will be back in a quick minute. ニュースなどをゲストをお招きしてお届けする番組です。こんにちは、ハワイ。各週の月曜日2時からぜひ皆さん見てください。ホストの国瀬ゆかりでした。アロハ。Hi, I'm Bill Sharp, host of Asian Review here on Think Tech Hawaii. Join me every Monday afternoon from 5 to 5:30 Hawaii Standard Time for an insightful discussion of contemporary Asian affairs. There's so much to discuss and the guests that we have are very, very well informed. Just think, we have the upcoming negotiation between uh, President Trump and Kim Jong-un. The possibility of Xi Jinping, the leader of China, remaining in power forever. We'll see you then. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is Honolulu City Councilman Trevor Ozawa, and today we are going beyond City Council. Trevor, you read my book, Beyond the Lines, or you're working on it still. Um, what are you liking about it so far? I like the uh, anecdotal stories that, that you have about how you translate what you've learned through tennis and, and really give us good, um, good, good lessons on, on leadership, you know? Um, being the last one to speak, you know, listening first. It really resonates with, with what we do at the city council. I mean, we sit there and we listen we listen for a long time, <laughs> and, then, and then we have a discussion among ourselves. And I think it's important because people need to know that, that they're being heard. You know, that, that was one great takeaway that I, that I learned from your book. Um, just also that, you know, we all have problems. There's a ton of problems out there. But what are the solutions, and how do you, how do you, how do you proactively approach these, these problems and, and solve them? Uh, and I think that, that was a good, that's a good story for us here in the city council as well, because we can all identify the problems. That's the easiest thing to do, is, is to point out the flaws in everybody and everything around, around the city. But it takes a great deal of hard work and effort and daily determination to actually, to actually take an idea for a solution and see it all the way through. It doesn't come overnight. And like you say, it's hard work. You know, this is dedication, belief, having a positive attitude, not throwing the racket on the ground, not kicking the ball around, but, you know, honing your energy and focusing it in on something productive. Um, and I really like those aspects. I, I can really relate to that, um, that, that part of the, the book. But. And it's in creating a superior culture of excellence, and that's yeah. what you're about. I mean, I, I know you have high standards. Yeah, it's, 
Exactly. It's it's just always taking the high road, you know. And it, being in the public sector, it's uh, you have a high standard. Um, first of all, from the public. Yeah. Um, as an attorney, as a father, as a, as somebody um, representing my hometown, I set the bar really high. And uh, you're right. It's a it's a excellent standard. I'm not going to be perfect, and I know that. But one thing is that. People know I, I will try my hardest, um, and I will definitely represent them with passion, and um, and and I put a lot of thought into everything that I do. You know, people may not see it, but at times it's agonizing, um, and it's not it's not always fun. You know, it's it's not always uh, it's not always enjoyable um, because it's hard work, and it takes courage to do the right thing. It does. It does, and. You know, it's specifically like when I go out door to door, day, day, to, day by day, I'm not out there with a bunch of people. Sometimes it's, most times it's just me. Yeah. I'm just out there sweating. Yeah. It's boring, you know, <laughs> it's, it, it can be, it can be monotonous and, and uh, you know, if, if a couple of things aren't going your, your way that day, I mean, you know, you, you could just throw in the towel and, and walk away and say, you know what, whatever. Yeah. But, but you got to remember, there's so many more people counting on you. That you got to just pick up, you know, just like in golf or, or tennis. For me, it's golf. It's, you know, you got to just put that hole behind you. Just move on to the next one and just start fresh, you know. Um, even when we're sign waving, you know, I mean, I would say 99% of the time we get awesome honks and, and eyes, but, you know, one out of a, oh, not even a hundred, maybe one out of a thousand, it, it can be an interesting interaction. And you just go, <laughs> Whatever. I mean, you just keep moving on, you know. So it doesn't. You just gotta be. Uh, you gotta be tough too, and you gotta yeah. let things just slide off your back. Um, no, and you're you're completely right. And Trevor, you know, there's people define success in so many different ways. How do you define success? I define success by by really the the environment and the culture and um, the, the the things that are. Are changed as a result of of uh, my effort or yeah. my team's effort, and I can say that we have been successful at the city council. We've made people think differently. We've made people question things. But not not only have we made people question things, um, we've helped change things into a better culture. In my opinion, that we have more accountability since I've been there. We have provided more transparency on our big projects like the rail. Um, we're shooting for the moon, you know. We, I think that we can. I think that we can. Um, we can change the way that we budget for this rail. Uh, I think that we can help. Um, we can help steer things in a, in a different path forward. I believe that that our best days are still ahead of us. Um, I've been fighting for more affordable rentals in in Hawaii, in Honolulu, uh, more affordable for sale projects. Uh, fighting for that gap group, like my my colleagues, people in my demographic that have said, there's nothing for us in Honolulu. I'm changing that and I'm yeah. working, not only, it's not me, it's it's the people that we've been working with. And I think that is successful. That is success when you can say, uh, things are different four years ago than they are now. And, and the reason that uh, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people don't like change. And so they, because things are comfortable, you know, but when we change, it makes people a little uncomfortable, but for the for the greater good, I think um, I think we've been moving in the right direction. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I want to ask you about yourself here. Um, what's been your greatest obstacle in your life in achieving success, and how did you overcome that obstacle? I would say uh, I would say when my dad passed away in 2002. You know, it was a it was a real tough time. You know. Um, and I thought about, you know, maybe switching schools or doing something different. And instead, I decided to put my nose down and, and keep working harder. Yeah. And uh, I actually had my best year at USC, um, at the highest GPA I ever had. And uh, and I just kind of, I just decided to, you know what, go forward in a positive way and make a difference in this lifetime because, you know, that life is short. Yeah. And that if you're going to be here, might as well make the most out of it. And so... Um, when I decided to have a positive outlook on life and to say, hey, you know what, these are the cards that were given to me, things happen, I can either respond in one of two ways, you know, 
look backwards or look forward. And I wanted to move forward and uh, made me work harder. It's pushed me to achieve more things. And for example, running for city council. Life is short. I mean, you don't have to wait uh, until you're a certain age to run. If you want to get involved, get involved now. And I did that. And I'm, I won my last election by 41 votes. Yeah. And I always felt that if I, w if I were to win that election, and if I were to win any other election in the future, it's really the will of the people, and it's meant to be. And I feel like winning by 41 votes is a clear thing that it was really meant to be there. That obstacle with my dad, if I didn't decide to continue forward and, and think of it in a positive way, I, I could have just, I don't think I would have been able to achieve success or, or be able to change the culture around me oh, and help make Honolulu a better place. Well, Trevor, yeah. every vote definitely matters yeah. in that case. Now, what, what are you hoping to aspire to achieve in your future? I want to just continue to make my community better. You know, I want, I want to be able to call Honolulu a, a place that is desired, you know, that, that people uh, that have moved away after high school or after college and never came back see it as a place of not sacrifice, right, where we have to come back, oh, because we've got to take care of our parents or grandparents or a family member. But we want, I want to change it to be a place where Honolulu is the best place in the world to live. I mean, we, we already know that here. Yeah. But we gotta, we got to also continue to sharpen our, our knife. You know, we got to continue to sharpen that edge that we have here and let people know, hey, we're not, we're not sitting on our laurels. We, we are the best place for, for uh, new growth, uh, for work, live, work, and play, a lifestyle. We're the healthiest. We want traffic to go down. We want to be... Right now, we're the worst in traffic. I want us to be the best in traffic. You know, I want us to be the best in, in um, clean energy, in, in renewable energy, in smart growth, uh, in technology, in, in every sort of way. I mean, we're number one in Aloha. We're number one in tourism. We're number one in a lot of rankings, and I want us to be the best in all of them. But most importantly, I want my family to come back home. I want my friends to be able to come back home, and I want us to just enjoy what it is, uh, why we're all here. Why we're here is because we love the people. We love our friends and family, and I want people to come back. I like hearing yeah. that. Now, before we close, Trevor, I want to ask you, what character traits, what are some of the most important character traits you feel an effective leader needs to have? I think honesty, yeah, um, integrity, and passion. Yeah. Because, number one, honesty. I mean, nobody wants a liar around whether you're lying about little things or not. Uh, if you can't trust that person, it makes people feel uncomfortable. Uh, I wear my heart on my sleeve. People know I'm honest. I'm straightforward. Um, and that's when I get, you know, you can take some criticism as well, being straightforward. But at the end of the day, people can trust that, you know, you're telling them what you're feeling. And that's, I, I notice people like that a lot. Having integrity, you know, doing things not for your own personal gain, uh, political uh, gain, but for the right reasons yeah. and integrity. I mean, that's when nobody's around, are you doing the right thing? Um, that means a lot, you know, especially in, in the public in the public service world. Um, it just it just you have to have it. No, I, I totally agree with you. And I, 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 I mean, every great leader, you're so right. Yeah. They need to have that, you know, the passion, the right. honesty and the integrity and I love hearing yeah. your insights you know, on the show today, and I'm w wishing you the best of luck on your campaign for, for this election. I want to really thank you. thank you for being here on the show today, Thanks, Trevor. Rusty. Yeah, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For information about my book and TV shows, check out my website, rustykomori.com, and connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. A special thank you to Iolani Sportswear for my awesome shirt. I hope that this show and my book inspires you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.